I'm going to talk about my favorite thing in the world, food. But first, I want to talk about something else I'm a fan of, cars. I've always been fascinated with cars, all kinds. Sports cars, classic cars, muscle cars, big cars, little cars, even electric cars. But there's one thing that's no fun about cars, and that's buying one. I think it's one of those universally terrifying experiences we all hate. Shopping for a car, new or used, go in, you feel cheated, nickeled and dimed. You don't get the color you want, or the option you want, or you have to buy an option you didn't want. We've all been there. But let's suppose for a second that you have the fantasy, all-time great car buying experience of your life. You go in, they're friendly, they're honest. You can get exactly the car you wanted at the best price. Let's say it's $30,000. So you're about to buy it, and the salesman says, wait a second, there's something else I have to tell you. Second choice, plan B. You can have the car, just as we discussed, for $30,000, or for $60,000, twice as much, I can sell you just the engine, the driver's seat, and the steering wheel. That's plan B. Which do you want to do? Well, you'd be crazy to go with plan B, paying a lot more for a lot less. It sounds ridiculous, because it is ridiculous. They don't sell cars that way. But they do sell food that way. And every day, at supermarkets all across America, we choose plan B. We pay more, and we get less. Less flavor, less food, and less health. That's why I'm here today, and that's why I want you to rethink whole foods. When I say whole foods, what do you think of? Most people I talk to think of the supermarket chain, but that's not what I mean by whole foods. Other people think I'm talking about quinoa and brown rice and whole wheat, but that's not what I mean by whole foods either. I mean whole in the literal sense of the word, the way food occurs in nature, like an orange versus orange juice, or coffee beans instead of ground coffee. Why is this important? Because most of the time, when you start with whole foods, you pay less and you get more, just like in my car example. You get more flavor, which everyone wants. You get more authenticity, which is something consumers often overlook. And you often get more health. It's a win, 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 win. Consider the humble apple. It's not the healthiest fruit, but it's way better than apple juice. Eating apples, whole apples, lowers our cholesterol. Drinking juice does not. When they make juice, they get rid of the good stuff, the fiber and the cancer-fighting antioxidant polyphenols. Drinking juice elevates your blood sugar faster, whereas eating the same number of calories in a whole apple has more fiber and less sugar. Both good things. Yet apple juice costs more than apples. That's just one example. When I wrote my book, Real Food, Fake Food, I wanted to give readers very specific tips for how to shop better at the supermarket and eat out better uh, in restaurants. But I covered a lot of different kinds of food, from cheese and wine to olive oil to seafood. So at the end of every chapter, I have a long, detailed list of tips, label terms, red flags to avoid, that kind of thing. But when I speak to audiences about my book, they always ask me, what's the number one overall tip? So I've given this a lot of thought, and my number one tip is buy whole foods. Food critic at heart. I review restaurants every week for USA Today. I write about food for newspapers and magazines. And I love things that taste good. I love food. So I came at this from that angle, uh, why what I call real foods taste better. But as I started to do the research, serendipitously, it turns out that they're better for us as well. And they're often better values, despite being higher quality products. So let me give you a, a concrete example, common example. Boneless, skinless chicken breast. Costs twice as much per pound as whole chicken, sometimes more. What do you get for the extra money? You get one of the blandest ingredients known to man. You're never going to walk into a Michelin-starred restaurant and see boneless, skinless chicken breast on the menu. A uh, famous chef like Elaine Ducasse or Bobby Flay or Gordon Ramsay might make you a gorgeous whole roast chicken. It's a classic French dish. But they're not going to make you boneless chicken breasts because they make their living selling things that taste good. 
So most chefs will tell you a few rules about meat. Dark meat has more flavor than white meat. Meat cooked on the bone tastes better. Larger cuts stay juicier. And a lot of the taste is in the skin. So boneless, skinless chicken breasts are the opposite of why food tastes good. Yet, they cost twice as much, and we buy them. Why? Well, most people I talk to say either convenience or health. To which I have to say, bullshit. <laughs> you want convenience? Buy a rotisserie chicken. It's cooked, it tastes better, it's cheaper, and you can chop it up and use it in any recipe that you'd use boneless chicken breast in. What about health? Most poultry raised in this country is raised very poorly. A lot of antibiotics, unnatural, often disgusting diets, and then, because you pay by the pound, they add water, so it weighs more. So when I go to buy chicken at the supermarket, I'm very careful, very picky. I buy truly naturally raised chicken that has no added drugs, no weird diet, and no added water. That chicken tastes better than junky chicken, but it doesn't cost more than our junky ordinary chicken cut up into boneless, skinless breasts. So if I'm going to pay a premium for health, I'll still eat the delicious skin, but I'll leave the drugs and the weird diet behind every time. But at least when you buy chicken, you get chicken. Unfortunately, that's not the case with all our foods. So I'm not big on PowerPoints or graphs or anything, but I did bring a visual aid today. This is my friend, the North Atlantic Lobster. You can all recognize this guy. It's the cartoon image of a lobster, claws and all. Lobsters are not farmed, they're not fed, they're not given drugs. They're just put on the ocean floor by Mother Nature. We catch them, we eat them, and they're delicious. But best of all, nothing else looks like a North Atlantic lobster. So when you see this whole lobster, you know exactly what you're getting and you know it's going to taste good. But what about lobster bisque? Inside Edition did an expose where they went around the country and ordered dishes like lobster bisque, lobster salad, and lobster rolls from restaurants, national chains, and mom-and-pop places. And then they DNA tested the food. <laughs> Fully a third of the lobster dishes contained no lobster whatsoever, They usually used a chopped uh, mix of cheaper seafoods. But my favorite was a restaurant in New York's Little Italy that had lobster ravioli on the menu with no seafood whatsoever in it. Really. So, to recap, whole lobster, real food, could taste good. The word lobster, you don't know. You might be getting ripped off. In general, seafood is the most convoluted and fraudulent sector of our food supply. Numerous studies have shown substitution rates of 70, 80, 90 percent for prime species. And what this means is you go into a seafood store, you pay for a premium fish like grouper or sole, and you walk out with a much cheaper, lower quality fish. And uh, red snapper is the worst. In this country, you order red snapper, and eight or nine times out of 10, You pay $23 or so a pound for red snapper, and you get tilapia or tilefish or panga or some other farmed Asian catfish you've never heard of that costs two or three dollars a pound. It sounds crazy, but it's true. It's been well documented. And in fact, there are entire species of fish you've never heard of that you'd never see at retail that are imported into this country and millions of pounds annually just to counterfeit your favorite fish. It's the same story. You pay more, you get less. And the reason this scam works so well is because as Americans, we don't buy and eat a lot of whole fish. We prefer white fish, and we prefer fillets. And all white fish looks the same cut into fillets, so they can give you anything, and they often do. Fortunately, There's an easy solution to this problem, and if you've been paying attention, you probably can guess where I'm going with this. Buy whole fish. The problem is, a lot of us don't know what to do with whole fish, and it can be intimidating. So here's what you do. You Google Red Snapper, and you look at its picture. <laughs> <laughs> Then you go to the seafood store, and you find a whole Red Snapper on ice. Now you've seen it. 
You've identified it. It's just like the main lobster. You know what it is. But you still don't know what to do with it. So I'll let you know a little secret. You don't have to know. Your heavy lifting here is done. Ask the guy to cut it into fillets for you. He will. Mission accomplished. When you start with Whole Foods, you buy better and you eat better. And there's a reason why I chose to put a wedge of Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese on the cover of my book. It's a wonderful cheese. It's known as the king of cheeses. And it's made in Italy under very strict rules, uh, similar to Champagne in France. These rules dictate everything about the cows and what they can eat. So the milk used, unlike our milk here, is 100% pure and free of antibiotics, steroids, growth hormones, pesticides, chemical fertilizers. It's as pure as you can imagine, but it's also as fresh as you can imagine, because the law says they have to start making cheese within two hours of milking the cows. Then when all that's done, the cheese has to age for a year or more. It's so good. But none of that applies to those tubes of stuff called 100% grated Parmesan cheese that we get in our supermarkets. In that case, 100% refers to the grinding. <laughs> What's in that canister is, in fact, 100% grated. It is not, however, 100% cheese. Not by a long shot. You can just look at the ingredients. In addition to all the various chemical additives, almost all grated cheese in this country has added cellulose, which is a natural fiber often derisively called wood pulp in the food industry. And the FDA approved the addition of cellulose to grated cheese because it prevents it from clumping. However, when the FDA did this, they didn't bother to set a limit to how much cellulose you could put in the cheese. And manufacturers realized cellulose is cheaper than cheese. So if they used more than they needed to stop clumping, sometimes way more, they would make more money. For you, same story. Pay more, you get less. But here's the thing, is, what do you do with grated cheese? You put a little bit on your pasta or a slice of pizza, small quantities. You never have a recipe that calls for a gallon of grated Parmesan cheese. So here's what you do. You take a grater and you get a chunk of cheese and you go like this. And that takes three seconds. That takes three seconds and Now you, it tastes better because your food actually is better. Starting with whole foods does not work in every single case, but it works in a lot of them, enough of them so that if you care about what you eat, if you care about what it tastes like, if you care about how much it costs, and you care about your health, you might want to rethink whole foods. I have. Thank you.